Weekly, uh, host Ken Boone. This week, my guest is Jeff Stankitis, correct? Yes, Got that's it right. correct. All right. Uh, Jeff is a restaurant owner with his brother, I believe. Jason. Jason. Uh, in Fallbrook, California. The restaurant's called The Coal Bunker. Um, uh, obviously, it's difficult times. We'll get into how it's affecting his business during the pandemic. Uh, but go ahead and like, subscribe, check out. This will be on podcast as well. Whiskey Wednesday Weekly is the podcast. You can like, subscribe, listen to all the interviews as well as this one, as well as my YouTube channel, which you're most likely watching it on uh, Ken Boone Whiskey. So that being said, uh, introduce Jeff. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good, good. So Jeff and I don't know really each other. Um, so he sent me a little bit of his backstory, so we're definitely going to dig into that. Uh, the point of this interview today is restaurants. So not only because he had, owns one, but what took him there, what, him, what got him into the coal bunker, the theme behind it, uh, why him and his brother have decided to do business together, how has it been, uh, not just during the pandemic, but opening a restaurant. I actually wanted to open a restaurant when I was 19. That was one of my goals. Never did, obviously, but um, to know that it's super hard, I'm pretty sure. Oh, you know, yeah. Um, that's kind of what I want people to understand is, you know, the success and what it takes. And that way people, if they're watching this and they're interested in that, know the hard work that, and determination that goes into restaurants, mm -hmm. obviously. And what's your personal story about it. Uh, that being said, um, we're going to start off with a quick shot today. Uh, we're only doing three today just because the timing and everything. And I, you know, my wife's still driving. <laughs> Everyone knows I don't ever drive with these things. Um, but I still have some things to do this afternoon, <laughs> so I don't want to get schnockered today. Uh, we'll start off with Uncle Nearest. Have you ever had Uncle Nearest? I have not. Okay, it is a very, very good small batch whiskey. Uh, actually, one of my newest to my collection. Just tell me when to stop, because you don't have that far to go, if anywhere. <laughs> That's good. Good. So, good news is Jeff likes whiskey. He says that's his drink of choice. So, he doesn't own an actual full bar here because of the license, but the good news is he, uh, he does like whiskey, so that's a good draw. Mm -hmm. Yeah? You ready to taste it? Delicious. <laughs> that's pretty smooth, huh? Very smooth. <laughs> Very smooth. We'll sip that for the next few minutes. Um, so we're going to get into Jeff's story real quick. So Jeff, you're originally from San Diego, is that correct? Yes, I was born here. Okay, and your family, like your family roots is not, correct? Yeah, my mom was from the south, okay. uh, mainly Tennessee. Um, and a lot of them have spread out to different parts of Tennessee. Okay. And uh, my grandfather spent it, most of his years in Alabama. North oh, okay. Alabama, so. so that's why you're whiskey fan, maybe. Huh? Oh, yeah. The <laughs> South, right? You probably... I just I gravitated toward the, the nice, rich caramel and the yeah. whiskey. You know, oh, nice. It's it's my favorite to drink on its own. I, uh -huh. I get into a little tequilas, but my you know my main everyday drinker is definitely whiskey. And I get what you're saying. I, I have about 40 bottles at home, so that's just because of the show. Um, you know, I could actually probably have a decent little bar. Um, but what do you think of this one though? It's pretty good, huh? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's definitely a nice, it's it has pretty rich characteristics on the yeah. flavor. It's very good. Yeah, it's very good. It's, it's like $50 bottle range. Um, that being said, so your, your family's from the East Coast or the South, okay? And your brother also was born here too? Yes. Okay, are you guys close in age or? Uh, four years. Oh, okay. So he's older or younger? Older. Okay. So from here, like, what kind of childhood did you have, real brief? Was it was it a good childhood? You said Point Loma, which is a pretty nice area. Definitely, uh, yeah. definitely peaceful. We were mostly on our own. My parents divorced when I was young, so you know my mom had to work and raise us, and, okay. and you know we kind of did our own thing and okay. had the typical '80s childhood. And, and so were you like Point Loma? Did you fish a lot and all that stuff? Or uh, was that just we got, we did a little bit of fishing. My brother does a lot more fishing than I ever did. Mm -hmm. Um, I, my main fishing was back when I was in the south, we'd do a lot of pond fishing, oh, okay. and fish fishing and things like that. Oh, okay. And then go home and, you know, clean them and grandma would cook them and that kind of thing. Yeah, that so, kind of thing, yeah. I'm originally from Maryland, so I mean, it's not the south, but it's definitely on the east coast where it's a different side of things, right? Yeah. Um, well, okay, so let's talk a little bit about your decision. Did you go to college? I did go to college, so after graduating from high school, I went to Chico State. Okay. And you know, there was a next step in life, and then I uh, didn't really care much for the classes and learning things that I didn't really have much interest in, and, and never really found my path in life or passion or that kind of thing. Right. And a few years in, my friend had uh, basically come into a restaurant and started, he became partner in that, and one Halloween, we came in the next day, and, and he 
was very short-staffed and asked all, all of us to help out. And so I started washing dishes, and someone got behind the bar, and someone started running plates. And, you know, we all helped out, and then I just kept on helping out and worked for free food and free alcohol. And, <laughs> and then one day he came to me and asked if I paid him, do you think he would show up? And I wanted to. Oh, wow. And just started working there, and a few years in, started running the kitchen, and just kind of fell, my, fell in love with the, the lifestyle of being behind the line. And, that's that's and pretty cooking cool. food and just when your mind shuts off and you're just constantly cooking mm -hmm. and, and just love that and so I love that you do that that's awesome so so you are you the cook here I I'm, I'm one of I brought in another friend that I met in culinary school to help cook nice. and my brother cooks so yeah all of us kind of cook my wife cooks oh good so it's a lot of a lot of cooks back yeah. there yeah. I kind of after culinary <laughs> school I kind of fell more in love with the operational side so I kind of like see things and not so much cooking anymore right. so it, it's fun when I do it I just don't spend my life back there yeah. that much anymore. It's not, that's your main, it's not your main focus. Yeah. Yeah. Well that's pretty cool and the reason why is like I said I wanted to own a restaurant and I'm a huge cook. I cook. That's my job at the house. I mean I have a full time job and stuff but I'm the cook of the house uh, only because it's a passion and my son uh, you know wants to be a cook or a chef. I mean but like you said I like that idea of getting your hand dirty first yeah. and realizing something you want to do yeah. because in your head it sounds great or going to school for classes it sounds great but you really got to get a feel for the speed the heat the, the management and the oh, pace yeah. of a good kitchen and, and that's we, what i love we, we met those people in culinary school it's it's interesting to see the, the kids that come fresh out of high school and, and think that that's what they want to do but mm -hmm. they've never really experienced what you like it right versus me that came from the kitchen and mm -hmm. then went to culinary school right that's different. And, you, and you really see the difference of who understands what it takes to be on the line and right. all the work that it takes versus kids thinking that they're just gonna learn to and be just an executive chef yeah, right. and you're just gonna have a place one day. Right, you're just gonna <laughs> get out of here, go to school for four years, get a place and be an executive. Yeah, it's a lot more than that. You still yeah. gotta start low even when you have a culinary degree. Exactly. Yeah. That's what a lot of people realize and that's a you know a big part of the federal funding for culinary school or trade programs and things like that where you're spending a lot of money to earn a job that's typically fifteen dollars starting right. an hour, and the paying that back, a lot of people don't do that math. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I knew I knew from before I even started culinary school like what my end game was and sure. where I wanted to get to, and I already kind of spent my time on the line. And, and during culinary school, I've worked at a couple other places that I've kind of dabbled in different you know, atmospheres and different kitchens and sure. style of food. You get that whole different experience. Yeah. You need to get different perspectives and kind of really hone down on what your style is and what you like to do. Mm -hmm. But more so realize that, you know, going and working for somebody is just not an end game in this career. And, right. and you really need to have your place and you need to have your passion. And there's a lot of, fortunately, there's a lot of different avenues in this day and age where you can do a lot of things from home. Mm -hmm. You can be the cottage industry sell things or you can have a place or, or you can rent a commissary kitchen and you can do things where it's your style of food and where to sell things and well, that's, that's kind of make a business that. of that you don't have to own a whole building there's food trucks there's a lot of things yeah, yeah. that avenues you can go to nowadays mm -hmm. you know before it's not everyone yeah, it's not like that. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit where did you go to culinary school because you said you came back here i moved back here in 2009 started at the art institute which is no longer there Correct. Um, Valley, right. mm -hmm. yes. Um, I was kind of the last class to oh, okay. really experience the original format of it. And how long was that there? The two year program? I, uh, they had multiple. So when I started, they had an associates and they had a bachelor. Oh, okay. Um, so I did both. I did the associates in culinary, or culinary arts and a bachelor's in culinary management. Oh, okay. Um, throughout, well, the, toward the last half of my bachelor's, they added certificate program which you just basically learn to cook and it's a nine month mm. and then they added a uh, bachelor's of hospitality management nice. um, a lot of people my grade didn't switch because it would have just backtracked a little bit oh, okay. um, so we just kind of stuck with that and it goes more into the operational the management side of things yeah. and that's versus kind of where the kitchen have, and the yeah. cooking and the it's kind of nice because you got both of those like right. you said you kind of like the operation side after culinary school you you got to learn that. That's they had cool. they had a baking and pastry associate's oh, okay. degree as well. But you didn't do um, that. I TA'd for a few classes just because I wanted to kind of learn. 
that sure. stuff, and they wouldn't let me use those classes as electives mm. to <laughs> kind of gain both. Oh, really? But, uh, so they were a little strict in that, but yeah, as, as years went on, about halfway through my, my time there, they went a little more corporate and started weeding out things, and it was a little more structured, and yeah. glad I got out when I did. And, yeah. You know, That's they, nice. It, it changed for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny is I, I was like, now we can hear. I didn't realize there was something running and we started like the beer cooler or something in the back there. Oh, so yeah, shut yeah. no, no, I mean, it'll, it, we can still hear it, but I was like, oh, it's really quiet here all of a sudden. Yeah, you can't time those things. Yeah, no, they come <laughs> on when they want. That's, that's why I like, I'm actually, we're in his restaurant, so that's what I like about it. Um, the second part of what I'd like to get to before we do another whiskey um, is you talked a little bit about your desire to uh, oh, actually, I think I wanted to figure out, you had said you built this place, or you were shooting for this place. You said you had some interior design and construction background. Is that your brother and you or family? Or so my you? mom's been in interior design for 30-something okay. years. Okay, so that was her big career. That right? was okay. her career, yeah. She she went into that when, after they got divorced and kind of went that path, worked in furniture stores, hated working for people. Mm -hmm. we, she basically did free design for trying to get the sale on furniture. Oh, okay. And people would steal sales and just hated that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And so she went into, got her degree, if you will, in uh, interior design and just went that path and, and you know, was successful at it. Mm -hmm. was able to yeah, you know, years, raise that's... us and, and yeah. make a go of it. Mm -hmm. And so um, it really lent to her now fiance's uh, in general contractor mm -hmm. and my brother got into paint contracting just because a lot of the work that she had done led to needing help with Correct. x y and z because there's a lot of years that, have, that were going in before all this restaurant stuff is oh, what yeah. you're saying right oh yeah so like you're going to school but where are you working in the meantime like were you a full-time student or did you do some that is that where you did the other restaurant stuff during that time i was 90 percent student i worked in a couple places that you know a lot of them only lasted six months like helped some places open mm -hmm. Um, like I mean, short days, most right? of them were kind of helping someone out or, you know, needing work at the time, wanting to learn something new. Mm -hmm. um, so I worked in a couple places down here, one in Point Loma, one at a winery up in Temecula. Okay. And that was to help out a friend and then ended up spending probably six months or so there. Oh, okay. And, you know, it, it passed the time and, sure. you know, made a little money and then, you know, time to, time to move on. And yeah. It, uh, you know, after culinary school, we actually got into the brewing industry. Yeah, that wanted to hit on that, actually, because yeah. you brought that up, and that's that's an interesting point. So you had said that, if I'm not mistaken, you had someone you were working with or partnering with or something with the brewery. And right. what brewing industry, how did that work out? How did you transition? So brewing? one of our teachers at culinary school was, you know, he's a he's beverage teacher. Okay. And he always loved, you know, beer and alcohol. Sure. You're, you're tasting that's the part of that's, yeah. that's his lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you it know, wasn't so that he was worried about. It. Right. Toward the end of culinary school, uh, you know, he always had this idea of opening a, a brewery, and another student that was there was, got big into brewing, mm. and, and you know, they teamed up, and I was friends with him, and you know, I wanted to link, you know, get involved with this, and, sure. and I brought my brother in because we do build outs and we can. Yeah, you were thinking like, okay, this is a great fit, right? right? So a lot Maybe of you know, I, I feel like these projects and brewing and restaurants and everything is about building your team, and I thought that we were a great fit, mm -hmm. and so you know we got together and, and our contribution was a lot of manpower. We did the investment for the build out and we did the build out, and we built a pretty nice tasting room and, mm -hmm. and made a go of it. It was real small, it was about fifteen hundred square feet. And where was that at? Granville by the steam. Oh, okay. So we uh, we built that out, opened, and spent a couple years there, and then just, you know, natural, general, uh, what's it, disinterest or, or yeah, just the, creative differences, sure, wanted sure. to go different ways, and, and he, uh, we decided to part ways and kind of did a split. And but in a cordial way. Yeah. Yeah. My brother and, and, and I and, my, and our brewer mm -hmm. all, you know, divided it out and, and got a payout. And so you were a partner? Yes. Oh, okay. So, so you weren't we just all, a helper. You no, were, you guys yeah, all we all, we all okay. that was our investment. We, we all had a contribution yeah. to this and, and made a good go of it. Yeah. And, and, you know, we had a lot of good beers and a lot of strong quality. A lot of fun, yeah. yeah. Now, where was that at? Because I'm a, I'm a heck of a part, you know, I, I, I am a 
Oh, oh, Qualcomm. Oh, Qualcomm. Yeah, Qualcomm. Oh, okay. Yeah. So more like so. Like, yeah, like Granville's. Yeah, if you go like from IKEA the stadium, and then you go past, past on Fryer. Okay. So then Fryer's um, towards the fifth. Uh, the yeah, just past fifteen. Okay. And then that's basically Grantville area. Got it. So right past there, if you go right. To the right. Uh, there's yeah. like a little. Yeah, there's a oh, there's okay. a little to the Home yeah. Depot and things yes. like that over there. Okay. So that's uh, that's about where we were. Got it. Okay. And there was a couple breweries over there. It must have been a pretty good draw when the Chargers were touring. Oh right. yeah. Okay. Must have been a pretty good. Little, even though it was small, you guys probably had a thing going, right? Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. That's so yeah, scary. after after we split ways, you know, we we wanted to get back into the culinary side of things. And then we decided, like, we want to do food in a brewery. And yeah. a brewer left, so sure. we were kind of thinking that. And, and he's now with Stone Brewing. And okay. He, he went back into the kitchen, and then he finally got into brewing, and now he's learning a lot. And I know you stay there a few Yeah, years. and you're still friends, obviously. Oh, yeah. yeah. And as timing kind of goes, it's just, you know, opportunities came, and we found this place, and, you know, finally landed on just sticking with the restaurant. Sure. And, and we'll see what happens from here. But Yeah. Um, so you're a young guy, then, it sounds like. I mean, 2009, going to school. And then here we are. Well, I got to college years. in 98, so oh, yeah, okay. I'm 41 now. Oh, okay. All right, so you went to college and then you went to school later. Yeah, yeah. I got you. So, yeah, I wasted, <laughs> you were the older student. Right? I wasted 10 years up in Chico and, and get found in the restaurant Wow, okay. Industry. You said that whole thing you talked about for 10 years. Yeah, and so then well, I went up there and then, and then a few years of going yeah, to school. Yeah. And then I got into the restaurant and spent five years friend. there. Okay. And then I, you know, wasted a few more years trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Sure, and yeah. ended up moving back down here to do culinary school. And then, awesome. You know, beyond beyond everything, I think schooling is a lot about, like, who you meet and... Connections, for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, the path in life always leads you to something, so you can't say that any time's wasted, but... Sure. You know. Yeah, but, no, I love that. I get, love that. Getting a late start, but a lot of people do. So. <laughs> but, you know, what's funny is you had a different... You had an experience. You, yeah. you know, you are building your resume, you are building a foundation for just who you are as a person. Exactly. You know, I always feel like, you know, I, I try to get my kids, you know, to realize they're, you know, 18 and they, they graduated and they started college. And I'm like, you've got to go to school at least this first year. And then, of course, this was all during the pandemic. And then I realized they're not school kids. Right. You know, like they don't love it and yeah. they don't have a passion for it, which I'm okay with. But I wanted them to still experience it yeah. because I went to school at least for, I was in the Navy. But before that, I did like a semester of college. And it was just not my thing. But I want them to figure that out. Now, yeah. when the school's open maybe in six months, I still want them to go experience that, to see how it is to be in a classroom and, and be with girls that you don't, I mean, it's just a thing, right? right. Like, that's what they wanted to experience this year. So I don't feel like one year or two years of that is a waste, right? Because you're gonna meet new people, you're gonna take different directions, you're gonna have different people in your life that guide you. That's, I love that. I mean, yeah. I, you don't have to be like 19 to 23 to, you know, yeah. and cookie cutter. And, just makes who you are. Some people make that work. Some people have no idea what they want to do when they're high school. It takes you 10 years. I mean, so any now. time you spent around other people, you never know who you're going to meet or what you're going to get interested in or right. that kind of thing. So Yeah, or you didn't even meet your wife yet. I mean, I'm not yeah. saying you didn't, but like some people, like, boom, then they go to this thing and they met their wife. And they're like, oh, I, literally one day somewhere, and you didn't realize you would have never done that if you didn't do something else. Right. So to me, that's pretty cool. Well, we're going to get into another shot before we get into some more meat and potatoes. Have you ever had Centauri? I believe I have. Okay. So it's the Japanese friend has this one. Yes, yeah. it is delicious. So I brought some different stuff for you today. I mean, obviously I don't usually, sometimes I mix bourbon, sometimes I have Irish, sometimes I have Scotch, but today I figured the Japanese would be a good one. So yeah. let's try this one out. It's a different smell altogether, isn't it? It's very it's light. Yeah, yeah, like sake would just kind of have that like undertone. Yeah, it's super good. It's got a different aftertaste, though, for sure. It tastes different than it smells. It, in my mind. Yeah, it does. It definitely has a like, sake kind of feel. It does, to it. yeah. It's, kind of weird. Weird. it's one of the number one brands. I mean, they only make like two really big Japanese yeah. whiskeys, and it's that one of them is that one. Um, but no, it's definitely a different one. I don't drink it a lot. Obviously, I've had this bottle for about six months, so uh, it's not one I sit home and usually I knock back all the bourbon. Yeah. I'm, I'm more of a bourbon guy. Um, small batch, you know, single barrel, those mm -hmm. kind of things. Um, so, there was the, the part in the story that we kind of want to get into, and I know, let's talk a little bit about some struggles. I mean, you know, you talked about the fun, the success, the, the ups and downs, the, what does it really take when you've seen all the things with the breweries and the cooking? You know, I want that, that part of your life where you're like, it's not easy, 
uh, you know, understand that there's hard work. And I think you have a pretty cool phrase in your email to me, like how, I don't know, I, I don't want to, I want you to be the one that tells it, you know, kind of like your philosophy and things will happen and stick to it in this and stuff like that. So you may need to remind me of the exact <laughs> phrase, but yes, I, uh, it wasn't like a phrase you created. It was just more like your mindset and how, and that's my phone in the background, just in case you guys want it. But no, <laughs> Don't uh, worry, we're close. Yeah, they're close. Yeah, we're not ignoring customers. Um, so anyway, go ahead and tell us a little bit about you know what, what you really did before you got here that kind of made you who you were, other than school and, and friends and stuff. I mean, I feel like you know everything's a struggle, obviously, and I think that if you just continue to do things, that you'll reach the end if that makes any sense. I feel like a lot of people put a lot of worry into how much it's gonna take or how much time or how much money or any of that kind of thing versus one thing I learned when I kind of dropped out of college initially was I stopped, like I would spend one day not going to class and then another day not going to class mm -hmm. and then it was a week and then two weeks. And then you kind of get that feeling like, well now it feels weird to go back. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those classes I spent with an unauthorized withdrawal because I would just kind of stop going. Mm. And I wasn't interested, I just stopped going, then it's like, well, who cares? And then, you know, time goes on, you have too many of those. And when I got done with that part of my life and I came back to culinary school, the thing I learned from that experience was, if I just go to class and just do the work, then grades will take care of themselves, I don't need to worry about what I'm gonna get on something and I'm gonna pass the class and I'm gonna move on to the next class. Mm. It wasn't a matter of what do I need to do to get past this class, it was just continue to go, show up, mm -hmm. and do whatever homework or whatever this. Oh, and God. Do it. I'm glad and you then, that. And then when you're done with, the, with that class, you, you just get done. I mean, time will take care of itself. You don't right. need to worry about the time part of things. Right, no, I love that because that's what it was. And, you know, it's interesting because every time I have one of these, everyone's got something completely different Say. Like there's not that one person, and everyone's going through struggles, and no one has never had a journey that's not been hard, right? Right, and I feel like that's what makes us who we are. And your statement is really, really kind of relates to me a little bit because I didn't do the school thing when I was young. I didn't like school, but I went. But I was like, I didn't really like focus on my grades. But like you said, if you go to school, and I always learn do your homework because that's what most of the time all they want to see is your homework. Right. right. It doesn't matter if it's a B or a C. They'll just give the fact that you did it yeah. and you showed up to class and you didn't, you know, goof off. You're automatically in the B and C. You're kind of already there. <laughs> yeah. It's like, that's how I feel like your goal of just stay with it. Just do your thing and things happen. Right. If you have something you want to shoot for, just continue to do the steps and eventually it happens. Yeah, set a path and go through the motions. And what people fail to realize and what you learn is that just showing up and doing the homework, mm -hmm. you'll end up with that A. Correct. It's pay attention, obviously, but show up to class mm -hmm. and do your work, and it'll learn itself into you. You right. don't need to worry about what you need how to do to I get the it? A and right. stress out constantly on how to get an A. Just go through the steps of what, show up, do your work, and things happen. And you know, taking that a step further, because that doesn't just mean the people listening, it's, he's not really talking about school necessarily. I mean, he is. Oh, it's but life. It's life. What we're saying is the A can represent opening a restaurant. The A could represent getting that job. You know what I'm saying? So whether you're showing up to a job and you're like, I can't hit my nut, just do the same thing every day yeah. that makes people successful and you eventually will get. If you did it for 100 straight days, you're going to sell something. You're yeah. going to do something. You're going to build something. If you built something, and you didn't really know how to do it right away, you study, you do that, you put that one nail in there, yeah. and then the next day you do another nail. If you it continue may take to you do it, one day it'll get built. Now right. the difference is between school and, and real life is that school sets the timeline for you. Sure. So I know that going to school for six months, at the end of six months, I'm gonna be done with that class, mm -hmm. however long it is. True. Now building this place, obviously there's no you try to set a timeline, <laughs> but as things go on up, and different yeah. things happen and challenges come it's up, a and pandemic too. money gets tight, and you deal with COVID, and right. then you, you don't know how long it'll take. But what you do know is that if you continue to work every day, it'll get done one day. Right, and that's that's a good point. Now we're going to get into the coal bunker now because this is kind of the finale, and it's not going to be five minutes. I really kind of want to talk about 
this philosophy, the style. I'll be posting some pictures up in between the interview. You've probably already seen a few, but if not, I'll be taking some pictures at the end and dripping them into the, the, the video. Um, so if you're on podcast, you'll just have to go to the link and check out this place. It's amazing. It's a real quaint. It's hard to describe, so I won't. It's just quaint. It's, it's unique. It's got a vibe like I've never seen, and I've been to hundreds of restaurants. Um, so let's go into when you guys bought this place. What year did you guys open up or buy? Like first buy it before you even opened up. So we're leasing, um, and we got it July. It'll be two years this next July. Okay, so it's literally just been a year, year and, and a half. half. Yeah. Okay. So but a lot of that was the build up. So we opened our doors to do takeout, obviously. Right. Um, April of this year. Okay, you opened up during the pandemic. Yes. Wow. And of course, since then, I know you guys have had openings and closings because they've allowed you know indoor dining space right. and then outdoor dining and all that. But that looks like you have a lot of room for outdoor dining here, right? So yeah, we flattened and kind of oh, tried to do a patio out okay. here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's you know not the greatest, but you kind of deal with what you got to deal with. Yeah, that's the thing. Time. Time. like whatever. They yeah. shut down inside. We switched our focus to outside, and they shut down outside. We put our focus back inside. And yeah. You just kind of keep, like I said, keep moving in whatever direction you can move on. And, and that's cool because when I met you, I mean, just today, you didn't look like some somber restaurant owner who's crying. In his, I mean, you're just like the same philosophy. You're like, what are you gonna do? Right. You just got to keep doing it. You can't close. The goal is to be a successful restaurant in right. this amazing little town. Um, and if you guys have never been to Fallbrook, it's it's hard to describe. I live in Valley Center, yeah. which is like space wise, it's the same. But town wise, we don't have anything. Yeah. You, know, you guys, we have like two liquor stores, no grocery nah. stores, three gas stations. You guys are like actually a city. You yeah. know, like five major grocery store chains. So this is a great little place to build a restaurant. You know, um, and I think you guys are going to thrive. So tell me a little bit about what you were telling me about the railroad situation and why you guys went with the full bunker and kind of give me the whole premise now that if someone's watching, whether they've been here or not been here, they want to know what this is about. So we moved up here about three years ago, our family. We bought a, a organic, certified organic grapefruit orchard. Oh, okay. And so we live on the east side of town and didn't know much about Fallbrook other than, you know, we knew it was here. Sure. It was a cute small town, has a nice little downtown strip. Mm -hmm. and Real small part of the town, and a lot of it's more rural and farming. And yeah, there is. It's a very small nucleus of the heart. Yeah, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's vineyards, there's a military base, and, and it's surrounded by horse racing. Things. And, yeah, has a, has a lot of uh, tourism that comes up here. Mm -hmm. We do a huge avocado festival. It attracts thirty thousand people mm -hmm. every year. We have you know big events, Christmas parades. It's a nice tight tight knit old sure. school feel of a small town in San Diego County, which mm -hmm. is. You wouldn't think of that's it. the best, yeah. And uh, so, and not knowing between, much between about between San Diego and Tobacco, so you're kind of yeah. nestled in between, you know, like if you know this place, like you said, you're halfway to Tobacco, so you might as well go to Fallbrook. Right. Yeah. Just a little five miles off the freeway. Yeah. You can, you know. But at, after we got here, we realized very quick that a lot of people were just complaining that there's not a lot of food options, there's a desperation, and, and we realized it too as you try to go out to eat that there's only a handful of places that you can even go to, and then you're really? going to miss on when you can go get to them oh. when they're open. And so, you know, we, we had looked at when we were originally thinking, oh, well, we're going to open. We went from brewery to brew pub to a distillery, back to a restaurant, who knew? And we were really looking at Oceanside and Temecula as, you know, there's a lot more people there. Sure. And we really felt like talking to people that they, the people were desperate for something else to so we kind of, you know, we looked and seen if there's any, anywhere that would, you know, work for what we wanted to do and, mm -hmm. and be as big. We looked at a place down the street and it didn't really work out. He wanted too much money for the space and you just get a little nervous on yeah. how much you're investing for how much you can really, you know, you're obviously going to get less customers and being really by the water. Sure. But we kind of found this place and talked to the landlord and he's really interested in improving his town and kind of bringing things here, having people open up businesses that are really going to help the town thrive. Now, why did you said the landlord is what? The mayor? We don't, we're unincorporated, so we don't have a mayor. Oh, okay. He just, he's, he's a huge stakeholder in the community. Right. right? He, he invests a lot on the town and, okay. and wants businesses that are going to help make this place a better place for everybody. So for that, being a landlord, he wanted something unique. He 
Right. He was picking. He was handpicking exactly what That's people awesome. come in here to operate something that he felt the town was going to benefit from. So tell me why you have like a, a railroad fee. Where, where did that come from? So he owns the property across the street, and he's the, the railroad used to come directly through here across the street in front of our building, going from Oceanside to Temecula, and then how we. So how old is that? Just curious. That closed. Uh, I'm getting mixed numbers, but it, it, the latest That's early true. 80s. Oh, okay. So something wow, like that. Wow, it's not fairly, I mean, it's not like the 1600s. No, yeah. It's, it's actually the 80s. Wow. It, it was fairly. I didn't know that mystery either. Yeah. Not, not a lot of it. It's a, you know, there's a, there's a nice old trolley car across the street, a railroad yeah. car across yeah. the street, yeah. and they've just restored it. He wants to make that area a train park oh. and have kind of the history of, of this area come through with that. And so he was really seeking for someone to do a railroad theme something here. And our whole style has been old wood, cast iron cooking, metal. That's our decor style. That's our food style. And when he said railroad, we thought, well, we can merge and, and kind of make that happen. That's It, it all fits. Mm -hmm. And so as yeah, so my brother looked into railroad decor and railroad styles and the history of the railroad really fell in love with it and started shopping decor and, and really did a good job. Him and my mom really decorated the place and, and kind of came up with a cool theme. And, and so we did booths that mimic kind of a railroad car. We did our bar that's inlaid with wood to mimic a railroad track. Um, all of it's hand built by us. The seats and stuff like that, is that supposed to represent? Like so all the, yeah, all the upholstery kind of is that velvety kind of cool, yeah. cool train car feel that you would have like an scale yeah, like the the like kind of like yeah, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. So Same a class. lot of it's kind of coming together and, and you know we got a long way to go but you know we're, we're at an opening point now and I think mm -hmm. it, it really ties together and it's a very unique deal. Now how many people would this seat on a normal day if there was no pandemic? Uh, well we would need more tables. Um, we're shooting for about a 75 person capacity. Oh okay. Uh, we have a downstairs lounge with a cool little wine bar and Couple that was pretty cool. Coming left in. seats and chairs and tables and coffee tables and you know we want to do different different rooms different feels. We want to do a lounge upstairs. We have plans for outdoor, you know, bar roll up doors, the whole thing. So this is really an early stage. I mean, oh, it's very early. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I love the fact that you guys are looking like you do now. So let's describe before we do our final shot and our last words. Describe if someone wanted to come from to here to eat. What is I know they can look at it, but what's your menu like? I mean, because the food looks like, seriously, like I'm a healthy eater and I do have my cheat day. <laughs> and I'm like, damn, I wish he was open on Sunday because my cheat day, you know, I crush some of this stuff. I like the slaw with the, the, the burnt, I mean, the meat and the buns and the, everything you cook. I'm like, I've got to come here. I mean, literally, I just, just got to rotate his cheat open. day. Yeah, no, I don't care. I'll do it. <laughs> I'll come here for lunch. I don't care. But I'm just like, describe the menu because it's so full of, and, and it's hard, like you said, the I can see what the people were talking about. Because every time his wife posts something, it makes me hungry. Yeah. Like every time you guys are cooking, even if it's the breakfast and stuff. So talk a little bit about the food. Where does it come from? Who created the menu? I mean, is, why is it different than any other restaurant? So all of us have kind of contributed to the menu. Um, what we shop for, our philosophy is doing everything from scratch. We want to do a rustic style where we keep all the ingredients simple, cook it well, make it from scratch and have everything fresh. So we rotate things, do small batch cooking and, and rotate things oh, through. Good. We want to rotate our menu so that things are a little seasonal, mm -hmm. a little, you know, rotate specials through. Some things will come off, some things will go on, mm -hmm. some things have been hit, some things we've been stuck with. Gotcha. Um, we did our take on a Nashville hot chicken. So we do a, a, a pan fried uh, chicken breast mm -hmm. uh, cooked in beef tallow. Mm -hmm. We don't use any seed oils, we use all beef tallows, coconut oil, olive oil, yeah. avocado oil. We make our mayonnaise with avocado oil, mm. um, no sugars added, that kind of thing. And So it is kind of healthy even though it's hearty. It's not like you're Yeah, it's, it's hearty, but we, we do it the best way possible. Right, right, yeah. Uh, we do have, we rotate through some vegan and vegetarian options. Mm -hmm. um, we want to make sure that that's that comes on actually, that's badass, yeah. yeah. Like that. that looks really good for being vegan. Yeah. yeah. So we've rotated to, you know, two sandwiches through so far, and mm -hmm. we're doing great hits. And we'll just, you know, keep doing them for a few months, and then yeah. rotate another one through. 
Now you guys do breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Yeah, just lunch and dinner. We're open 11 to 7.30. Oh, okay. Day. I thought I saw some kind of breakfast burrito or something. Mm -hmm. No? It's no. like a skillet. I thought it said breakfast or something. So you don't serve breakfast? No, we're not having breakfast right now. Um, That's probably do, good for hours. We do a brunch one day. I mean, yeah. yeah, hours are thin. Yeah. Um, we do fresh ground chop. Our burgers have been a big hit. We do the pan fried chicken sandwich. Oh, okay. Um, oh, it's a chicken sandwich. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's even better. Yeah. <laughs> And then we do our mac and cheese has been awesome. Mm. We, uh, my wife and I, helped come up with the okay. kind of cheese for that. That's awesome. And uh, she she's come up with a lot of killer desserts and mm. keep rotating those through. So our, you guys our, have a good dessert menu, okay? Yeah. Well, we try to keep at least two on. Well, that's what I mean. Our, and our cheesecake has been phenomenal. And you we make rotate the house? flavors. Yeah, we make those wow. in house. Wow. Wow. Um, our the our big hit's been the grapefruit cheesecake, mm. and pretty unique. A lot of people haven't heard of it. We grow the because you grow your own. We grow the great, organic grapefruits on our property. Oh, it's a great one of those. We've it's been good. we've been used, utilizing that as That's the awesome. season goes on, yeah. and we're about to run out of that. And oh, okay. It'll come back. You know, May or June is usually oh. harvest on the grapefruit. Yeah. Uh, we've done a lemon one, and we rotate flavors on our cheesecake, and mm -hmm. then now we're we have a pumpkin bread pudding on right now. Oh. And we've, we've done a pumpkin creme brulees and I'm getting hungry. Different things like yeah, that. Yeah. And, and so now it's, talk it's a little bit great. about the. Um, you guys have lemons too on there, just because it's. I've probably We've done the the lemon curd cheese. Yeah, you, you have like lemons on your property. I mean. Oh, uh, we have a couple of lemon trees. That we, uh, they don't last too long. Gotcha. <laughs> so yeah. the, uh, fortunately, this, you know, another great thing about this town is a lot of people have offered to give us oh, their produce because right. they, they like us and they say, hey, we have a bunch of trees. You know, here's mm -hmm. excess. Yeah. Um, avocados. Avocados, obviously. Yeah. And that season again is more spring, so when that comes back, one of the things we did as we opened was a half an avocado stuffed with different things. So oh. we did a pork stuffed avocado and that kind of thing. Oh, and, and people really loved that. Mm. And, uh, just gives different options for people. It's yeah. a little, little unique feel. We try to find things that, you know, isn't really often around town or we yeah. do well. And, That's awesome. And want to, you know, kind of give people a different option. Well, we'll definitely be here once you guys are open full swing. I mean, I, I, I'll come here for takeout, no problem, but I mean, I can't wait to sit in here. No, I mean it's meant to have. It's fresh. meant to have people. <laughs> and, and I feel yeah. bad that they're forcing everybody to eat it 20 minutes after. Yeah, day, that's so. the toughest part. Yeah, because I've ordered a couple of nice places, and by the time you get home, you're like, ah, oh, it's a little chilly. You know, it's, it's not hot. You yeah. know, I'm a hot food guy right off the grill. You know. Yeah. Uh, well, we're gonna do a last shot. Have you ever had old oak elk? Excuse me. Not. Oak elk. This one is actually one I got at Costco, even though it's, it's not the brand or anything. It's just one I ran across, and I've only had it on one other episode, and it is. Definitely unique. It's got Distillery of the Year. I think you'll like this one. And once you get your liquor license, you know, you can always hit me up. I'll let you know which one. Oh, yeah. You should carry, you know. I this like is that. A, a bourbon. I think this one's really good. I want to smell it. Yeah. It smells different than over here, too. All three of these have different flavors. You get that oak. It's really good, actually. Yeah. As you can see, I've, I've only had that for about a month, so. <laughs> when you have 40 bottles, you kind of rotate. Yeah, you you got to write the dates on the back. And that's a good call. Else. That's a good call. I should do that. Yeah. Find out how fast they get through. Yeah, that's for sure. I don't do these every day because my every day is like you said, wicked expensive. Yeah. If I did these every day. Uh, so in closing, I want you to, you know, you've really kind of promoted the restaurant in a good way. You've promoted yourself. You've promoted, you know, just your whole philosophy, I guess. But is there anything, you know, that you missed that you want to kind of get out there, whether it's your story or, or the place or what your goal is at the end? Like, what do you guys really want to see this restaurant do in five years, you know, other than be full of people? I get that. But. Well, yeah, obviously we want to be full and want COVID to be over and want people to feel comfortable coming out again and and really packing the place. I mean, it's uh, – but beyond that, our, our, our goal for this place is owning the building so we feel comfortable investing more in the building. Um, we want the we have an upstairs area that we want to do a high-end lounge and, and 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 outside we have garages out back we want to do roll up cage we have water features and kind of redo the landscaping and and just really develop this out as a very unique mm -hmm. and destination point and, and hopefully host events and, and things and really draw a lot of people to this town like I said Fallbrook's a big tourism destination point we want to be one of the hot spots to come to and and not only benefit from when they bring people, but attract people to help the local shops and things. We have a great
great downtown shopping district and a lot of ma and pa, you know, shopping places that, that people come here just to shop. So right. it's well, cool. all yeah. the more people that can come up and, and we can draw is, is the benefits of the town. And Correct. Because if, so, if I come here, which I normally would, let's just say, like, even though I live in Valley Center, I'm just saying, yeah. if I'm like, dude, I love this place to eat, I've got to go do something. You know, I'm not going to be here for nothing, right? So you're like, then I'm supporting something else. Yeah. And, and we just don't have that in Valley Center, so it's not like I would never leave there, which is only a, a few small restaurants and nothing is like this, right? Oh, no, I know Valley Center well. So it's like, it's like I'm, I'm not like taking my money elsewhere. There's really nothing to support other than maybe Fat Irons. Um, but this one here is like, that's that's the point. You guys are larger. I love your theme. I love your concept. I love the food. I mean, I haven't had it yet, but it, there's no way it can be bad, is all I'm saying. Yeah. Um, so in closing, I just want to ask you, um, your, we'll put this, all the website, the links in the, in the comments and stuff. You guys can obviously Google it. Um, but is this all three of yours, your brother here and your wife's sole income, or does your brother still do something else, or are you guys pretty much all doing this only? We do take side jobs here and there as time permits, but yes, this is our sole focus, and we can't abandon here, obviously, but with... COVID going on, things get slow. That's what I mean. Like and during the when, pandemic, you have to kind Yeah, of when work comes up or you have a side job, he's actually working a job right now. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, if you take a few days of work to get something painted or sure. filled out or that kind of thing. And, and you know, the, the other week I, you know, dem demoed a bathroom and mm -hmm. you just kind of take work for a few days as you get it. And yeah. kind of do the morning and then come here and work. And you, you just figure it out because at the end of the day, we got to continue bills here and, and with the government shutdowns it's you never know how many takeouts you're going to get or how many people you're going to get and it's you got to kind of do what you got to do well that's what i wanted to hit on i mean obviously i've, I've addressed the pandemic with a few guests that do have businesses and things like that so i'm glad that you would hit on that that i want people to know what are people having to do you know i mean if you're a small restaurant that just opened during the pandemic you know you've got to find other ways so when this does open make sure you guys come out and support it if you're anywhere in San Diego County. I know most of my listeners and watchers there, some, most on the East Coast as well, for my family and friends back there. You may not be out here anytime soon, but um, check it out either way, whether it's looking at it on the website. He's got some cool-ass clothing. I see the CB shirt right there. I don't know if you guys make shirts and stuff for everyone else, if that's just your chef. Yeah, shirt. we're limited right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'll be a few things. That'll be another thing once you guys drive. So check it out. Uh, I just The restaurant is one thing, but his story... I haven't had a restaurant here on here yet. Um, I haven't had one that's, you know, been through the, you know, like I said, everyone's got their own different story. Some school, no school, you know, it's amazing. So for me, it's all about the youth and people who do check this show out um, to just, if it just affects one person, and this is for you. I mean, yeah. it's for your kids and your grandkids. And, you know, you may leave this restaurant to someone in 20, 30 years, you know, whatever. And it's kind of like, how did this get started? You know, you have now something to encapsulate that say, wow, you know, I never really told my story. Yeah, and I think, I think you know, one other thing I want to say is that, that, you know, mom and pa is thrown around. It's not technically mom and pa, but that's a style of business where it's family operated. It's, it's just us. We're not backed by corporations. We're not some big conglomerate that can afford to sure. withstand things. And so when you do it yourself and this is your livelihood, you just hope for that support coming back. And you know, with all this going on, it seems like corporations are the only ones going to survive, and that's kind of where we're at. Is just you know, we hope we built this place for everybody around here. We hope more people come, but this is for the community. This is our lives, and we just hope that we have success doing it. Yeah. Well, in that note, I appreciate your story, Jeff. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I appreciate and, it. And um, you know, we'll, we'll definitely, guys, drive traffic here if you if you can anywhere in San Diego if you're watching or listening. Come here, check it out uh, when everything gets back to normal. And uh, with that, see you guys later.